get to Volcanoes National Park and the Big Island. It is 59 degrees and raining, so it means it's cloudy. I'm not sure exactly what we will or won't be able to see. visitor center and our first stop will be the sulfur area where they have fumes that have actually been crystallized in the sulfur area something tells me it's not going to smell too good there now if you want to do the sulfur tubes tour it's a mile round trip and it's pretty much level and paved so it's probably the easier of the trails so we're going to go do that then we're going to try and get to the crater rim and check it out and then let's see what we can find from there unfortunately we don't have good weather and we don't have all day i think the best thing would be to get out here about seven in the morning and plan a picnic and hang out here for the better part of the day They have the East Crater Road, the West Crater Road. If you take the West one, then it will take you to the ocean. The East one will take you to the Crater Ridge and the vent tubes. So we're gonna stay on that side because the West side 
they say you know if you're playing a four or more hours that's the area to kind of go to um, the lava tubes on the west side so if we have time we're probably going to drive over there there is a parking lot apparently right by the lava tube but it, it's limited parking and right now it's a little after one and the park ranger said don't plan on finding any parking there so there's another one uh, short walk away just before you get to the lava tubes so we might check that out Ooh, what's this say volcanic fumes are hazards to your health and can be life-threatening visitors with breathing and heart problems pregnant women and young children should avoid this area maybe you can wear your mask maybe that'll help out my bad i'll get back to being a tour guy I saw Bigfoot, it ended up just being a big squirrel. Disappointed. Oh, I can see some steam coming up. I think we're getting close to event tubes. We'll figure it out. Check it out. It's cool. It's like fog. So right here are some gases that are rising up to the surface through deep faults and fractures that were produced through the collapse of Kilauea Summit over 500 years ago. I don't know if you can hear it in the video, but you can actually hear like a steam sound coming from them. steam vent temperatures range between 140 and 200 degrees so you need to stay on the trail because one wrong moment of steam coming up from an unsuspected area could burn you quite terribly. crystals that you see are actually growing off of the gases now can you imagine if that happened to us when we farted our butts would be so painful with all the crystals going in right you know i gotta be funny if you like the smell of rotten eggs make sure you come over here to this point because man as soon as i came over here it stinks this is gases provide clues to hidden changes within Kilauea. That's the stinky area. If I can make a recommendation when coming to the Big Island, if you're going to come to the volcano park, at least book a hotel the night before in Hilo. You're about a 45 minute drive versus a two hour drive. 
you can get over here about seven in the morning maybe get down to the beach earlier see the sunrise then you can spend all day here oh it's almost two o'clock it's raining we're gonna be limited on what we can see but had we stayed in Hilo came here this morning directly we would have been about five hours in before the rain started and apparently it rains pretty frequently because of the mountains so that's just my little helpful tip for the day walking I found a secret vent tube right here so it's on the right hand side probably about a five minute walk from the last sign that you'll see in this little sulfur area that we were just at I don't know if you can see them but over here there's just a bunch of the steam coming up all across that ridge line right over there uh, it's starting about right here and it's going as far as I can see to, the, to those trees, and it's actually coming across right where Hesian's at. So distance wise, that's about 700, 700 meters, I guess. It's a good distance. But these fields are pretty big. Ooh, there's one right here. Check it out. A distinct temperature difference coming off of this it gets hot it's like a Texas Sun you know that that heat in Texas if you're from Texas you have your window down and you feel that heat that's what that feels like it's crazy here's another one you feel the heat coming off of it as well see them all back here like this whole ridge is just full of these vents These things are almost as hot as Hesian. Yeah, bonus points, what's up? We're at the main road again. If you cross the road, it takes you to a couple different uh, trails. So you can do the Crater Rim Trail, but from this spot to the, crate, the end of the trail where the crater's at is two miles exactly. So it's a 46 minute walk according to the GPS. We're gonna go back to the visitor center and then we're gonna drive down so we can get down there a little faster, get back a little faster, so we can try and make it to the lava too before it starts to get dark and check out a little bit more. Maybe, maybe be able to get down to the ocean. We'll see how it goes. See how the ocean in the motion, in the motion, in the ocean, baby lotion, suntan lotion. I don't know, there's a lot of ocean. Anyway, I, sometimes I amaze myself when I come up with stuff. But let's go check out the crater because well that's cool flora and fauna eh, not so much unless you're snoop dog and you're smoking it but i'm not snoop dog and i'm not smoking none of this stuff wish these clouds weren't here because the pictures I could get from Kilauea would be phenomenal. Like we're right on the ridge of it. You can see smoke coming out from all sides of it. No volcano uh, lava is, is seeable here. I don't know, maybe at night there could be, but right here there's not. So we're on a, it's a big crater. 
and then you drop down probably about 60 feet and then you have like this this little ridge that goes around it and then you drop down probably another 150 200 feet and i guess that's where uh, all the the lava and everything would come up from there let's go check it out sorry ahead of time for the bad video i can't control mother nature I don't know if you can tell in the video, but up there towards the, the next ridge over, you can see some of the smoke coming up. There's a faint amount of smoke coming up over here. And then down here, there is several areas that are going up the ridge line there of smoke or steam. because I like to be as accurate as possible and I am man enough to admit my mistakes. I was turned around and when I said west for the lava tubes and east for the ridge, I was flip-flopped. So if you wanna see the lava tube, you go on the east route and then where we're at now is on the west route. Now a little trick that I probably would have used had I known is I would uh, left the visitor center gone up about a quarter of a mile and in the video where I said hey, if you cross the street you're at a trail about 400 feet up from there is a parking lot with more vent tubes so I probably would have parked there seen the vent tubes on that side and walked like the 800 feet to the other set of vent tubes that are in the video and then that way I would have hit all of them and probably walked about half the distance the current spot that we're at is the highest point here on Kilauea uh, with an elevation of just over 4,000 feet. Uh, this is an important site for native uh, Hawaiians. They used to do ritual and cultural practices up here. Um, but uh, we're right here on the caldera or the rim. pointing at it looks interesting because from this perspective it looks like there's a cutout to where lava would have come down into this area here versus erupted from here uh, and come out around so it really looks like a bowl here versus like the cone that you normally see of a volcano so it'll be interesting to figure out where the lava came from where it goes uh, because they're calling it the caldera I think of cauldron when I hear that, like a bowl, right? A cauldron, right? So if this was just so much clearer without the steam, I'd have a better look at it. So if you know, let me know. But I think we're gonna have to come back here uh, some other time and on a different trip and spend some more time and maybe like hike the whole park that you can. But it's pretty interesting. This close to lava. It'd be really cool if there was lava flow and you could get a proximity suit and go down there and play with it a little bit. I use that term loosely, like playing, but it'd be cool to be walking around in a proximity suit down there near lava. That'd be a good photo. Hmm. So when I saw that they were talking about this having a uh, historic and ritual significance to the Hawaiians, I decided to use that app I downloaded to see if there's any ghosts around here that were trying to communicate. And I don't know if you can see that, but it said steamy. <laughs> and then it said filling spiders. This is kind of weird that we're like 
at the volcano and you can see all those steam vents and it said steamy and filling spiders. We're working our way back down to the visitor center. So we are at the Kilauea Overlook. So we're gonna check it out and see what it has to offer. And there is a cool little thing here. I'm gonna figure out what it is, but I'll show you what it is. It looks like a hammer, or some kind of battle device. Here it weighs over six tons and it was shot out from the volcano and landed here so it's just a testament to how powerful the volcano eruptions really are and how you don't want to be near them so a six thousand pound rock see how far it is now it got shot up from down here somewhere oh a rainbow sorry squirrel moment 